I admit it, it took a very long time uh, for this new release, uh, version 6, which is now uh, out, which is now available of, of Smart Race. But uh, there are actually a lot of changes. Really, the list is very long. Uh, and in this video, I would like to show you the most important changes and additions that I've made for this new version. Hope you like it. Uh, please let me know what you think about the new version. Drop a comment, drop an email, whatever you want. Uh, even maybe send some doves with uh, letters attached to their feet, <laughs> whatever you're into. Uh, yeah, hope you like it and uh, let me know. Let's get into the list of features. Uh, well, the very first uh, thing is maybe not even a feature. It's more like a bug fix, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, some of you may know that uh, when Smart Race first came out, it was only meant for tablets. Uh, there wasn't even a smartphone version of it. It was not possible to install it on smartphones. Um, and yeah, it was only usable in, in the landscape mode, which means you have to hold the tablet like this and you cannot hold it like this. Uh, so that was pretty annoying, uh, especially when it comes to entering a lot of data, like using the keyboard on the tablet uh, or on the smartphone. Um, and yeah, so I've changed that. Now Smart Race can also be used in portrait mode. Uh, and there's also a little nice um, side effect of this. Uh, let's call it a side effect. <laughs> um, you might know that uh, on the iPad and even on Android tablets, I guess, or bigger like phablets, big smartphones, you can use uh, apps side by side, meaning opening two apps at the same time, using them side by side. Uh, Smart Race now also supports this, so you can use Smart Race and maybe the browser next to it to download data, download uh, pictures of cars, whatever. And yeah, just have Smart Race right next to it and use it. So that's the first big feature. Woo! Probably the biggest change in this new version is what's new in the race screen. So I dealt a lot with customiz customization, customizability, whatever the correct name is. And uh, you can now customize a whole lot more than you were able to do before. The first thing that was pretty annoying, I guess, uh, I, I think you know that in version 5.4, there was a new system introduced, which is called widgets. Uh, this allows for placing several information uh, containers on the race screen, uh, which is pretty nice, but there was a big limitation on this. Uh, you couldn't really organize the whole widget uh, stuff into several columns, which means that a whole lot of space was actually wasted. So you would end up like uh, putting your layer together, but maybe the race screen did only contain two entries and the other widgets wouldn't use the space that was freed up by this. Now there are real columns and now you can organize your widgets in a really, really much better way to make better use of the space. And there are several more things to that. The first uh, change that you will probably notice if you already know Smart Race is that there is no menu button on the top left of the screen. This has been moved to the bottom left to be more consistent with the other buttons. And also the fixed buttons that used to be here on the bottom right of the screen have been removed. You can now use the buttons, the quick links widget to just place them wherever you wish to. Also, the events information bar that used to be fixed on the top of the screen is now also widget, which means you can place it wherever you want it to be. If you now want to go ahead and change the layout, you just, just as you're used to, go to this button here. You click Edit Screen Layout, and now the editor will open. And you can now just go ahead and change the settings as you wish to. As I mentioned, uh, there are now real columns, which means you can now place both columns and widgets on the race screen. So this is the first level, but you can also place sub columns. I will show you that in a bit. So first of all, we want to change this to 75% and this to 25%, which means they go side by side now. Um, now I can just go ahead and put any widget that, that I want into any of the columns and the widget will automatically adapt uh, to, the, to the width of the column that I put it in. For example, these are quick links widgets. I can now just go ahead and put them into this column. And you can see they will now no longer go to the bottom of the top, top widget here just because there's space, but they will stay in the column as you intend it to be. Now I can also go ahead and add sub columns. Uh, I will just go ahead and add 
the 100% column here. And now I could even add more columns to this column, like sub columns. Um, for example, I could add two 50% width columns and I could put the um, uh, record hunt widget there, for example, like this for controller three uh, and this for another controller. And using this, I can just go ahead and build a very nice race screen. If I'm done, I just click save and the new layout will be applied. And you can also go ahead and um, select uh, spacing for each widget. For example, large spacing for this one. And now it will have a bottom spacing, which makes it probably a bit easier to recognize the information that you want to see. There's another thing, which is the display size. For example, if you want to be able to see all of the race screen information, like when it's filled with data, you can just go into the settings of each widget and configure the display size here. So each widget has now its individual display size apart from the general display size that you can still adjust in the menu, in the quick menu here. So if you set this to a low value and you can still uh, set each widget to a higher value to make it being uh, displayed a bit bigger than the other things. You can now also change how the timing information is displayed by just going to the settings and select the side-by-side -side display style for the race screen, which then will it display as this. Another thing that actually was pretty high on the list of things that um, you wanted for this app, or many users wanted, uh, were so-called templates for races. So maybe you end up in the situation sometimes that you want to do uh, races with different settings and want to be able to uh, use these settings again in the future. For example, you invite your friends over, you have championship races, and you want to have uh, several races on different dates with uh, the same settings. You could either uh, end up writing all of these settings down and restoring them from hand, but that's rather annoying, of course. So um, there's a new section in Smart Race which allows for this. If you start a new race, uh, you have this new templates tab here on the very right of the screen, which means you can just go ahead, make your settings like whatever you want, a race with a lot of laps, um, with rain. And then if you're done with your settings, you just go to the templates tab and you go with a name. You just save it. And then afterwards, when you, whenever you head back to the screen, you can just go ahead and load these settings and they will override whatever you've set in these tabs. Uh, so yeah, you can just go ahead and use templates. Every once in a while, there are also smaller things that I would like to improve in the app. Um, and although I know that not everything is perfect, uh, I don't always have the time to improve things uh, like I would like to improve them. Uh, but every once in a while, I find the time and I cut everything down, I chop everything down, and I create it right from the scratch. And this is what I did with uh, two screens that you are very familiar of if you're a long-time Smart Race user, which is the assignment screen and the tuning screen. First of all, the assignment screen, which you find here. This is what it looks like. Uh, yeah, what are we looking at? We are looking at all of the eight controllers. Uh, if you are a Carrera digital user, you are familiar with the concept, probably. Uh, the first six controllers can be used by humans and the controller seven is reserved for the ghost car and controller eight is reserved for the safety car or the pace car, if you have one. Um, so what are we looking at? We have uh, the same section for each of the six or eight controllers. Uh, you have the colored bar here. You can change the controller color here with this little dialog that pops up if you click the little uh, color icon there. Um, you can also reset the assignment here using this arrow button. Uh, every change is applied immediately. You don't have to save anything or something like that. And now you can just go ahead and assign a driver by clicking here. And it will open actually the driver database. So there's no separate list anymore. It's just a driver database. You just click the entry that you want to assign. And the same goes for the cars. You just click it, you head to the car database, which is now actually opening with the filters applied if you have set any. So you can just go ahead and change your filters. Like I would only like to see uh, Audis in 124. 
then you just select the entry that you want to have and it's applied immediately. And uh, what's nice about that is that whenever you go ahead and do another uh, assignment, you click car again and it will open the car database with the filters that you just set recently. Uh, if you want to add a new car, you don't have to close everything and go to the car database and edit there. You can just go ahead and edit here and afterwards select it right away. For the tuning screen, it's actually pretty similar. So if you remember in older versions, you have these uh, tabs on the top of the screen for speed, for brakes, for tank. And now you don't have these anymore. You just have a clear overview with all of the six uh, configurable controllers. And you have your um, sliders here, which is speed, brakes and fuel. You can just go ahead and change the sliders and the changes will be applied immediately. So no saving, no switching between several tabs. Just go ahead, change the slider and you're done. Next up, there's a new statistics module, which you can find in the main menu and the setup and analyze section. If you click on it, you see some kind of graphical overview of some data that you collected uh, through your driving, uh, like how many races you did, how many qualifyings and how many actually how, how long the actual distance was that your cars um, drove on the track or on the tracks. Uh, you can also group that into different uh, time spans up to, to till the last year, uh, the last month and so on. You can even switch between drivers and cars to so see statistics for both of them. And yeah, I guess this will be extended in future versions, but this is what's there for now. Yes, that's it for this video. These are the most important things that have been changed in Smart Race version 6. Uh, there are a lot more, as I mentioned, but I couldn't cover all of them in this video. There would be just too much. Uh, some of them, you might have seen them in this video uh, without me mentioning them, actually. So if you want to see the whole list of changes, as I said, I'll post the link in the description below. And also, if you would like to discuss with other people about Smart Race, about slot racing in general, just uh, join the Smart Race Discord channel. I'll, post, uh, I'll put the link to the Discord channel in the description as well. And also, as I mentioned, if you got any feedback uh, for this new version, I would love to uh, see your comments below this video. And yeah, I uh, hope you like the changes. Hope you like uh, continue to like Smart Race. And uh, we'll see each other in the next video. Bye-bye.